it's lunchtime. I just felt like adjusting some vials. Stay tuned. Y'all during the making of this video, uh, notice a mistake that uh, I made. I didn't see it while I was doing it, and maybe all the years of working on race motors and grabbing Allens, I just naturally grabbed an Allen on the uh, posi lock on the uh, rocker, rocker lock. That's a torx, and I didn't see it until I blew it up, and I had my reading glasses on out there, so I guess I'm just really blind. So it looks to be a T20 and not the 764s. So I'll go ahead and edit that in there with text on the uh, bottom of the frames in which I'm saying 764. So sorry about that. And uh, it's, I think it's 45 inch pounds is the torque. But you'll see me use torque wrenches when I need to, but not right there. It's that small right there, I could strip that out with my hand. So. I'm comfortable with, my, with what I can do with my hands. So let's get back to the scheduled program here. Well, folks, got bored. Figured I'd adjust the valves on this uh, 14.5 horse Briggs uh, Industrial Commercial. It sits on my 99 Murray, the one I did transaction on. Main reason I'm doing that is, uh, yeah, I really didn't hear him click, but you know, I'm half deaf. So, uh, but I notice uh, sometimes it gets hard start. And if you're not familiar with these, or this series is most of these have compression release on the cam at starting speeds. Uh, we might go over that another day. But, they, so how you set the lash on these is a little different. What I've already done is I pulled the two bolts off, I hosed the hood on, got it out of the way. And uh, I just figured I'd go ahead and film this after I got started. But, uh, we got four three-eighths millimeter, excuse me, three-eighths headed bolts that hold on the valve cover. Come off really easy. I'm gonna make a new gasket. I'm not gonna buy one. And uh, so we can access the valves. And these are adjustable. And uh, with a little trial and error, the set screw is 764ths. And the Lock nut is three eighths. Well, I say no, it's not. Dog's three eighths. All right, 10 millimeter. All right, stand corrected. Well, let me take that back. Right. Yep, 10 millimeter. That's three eighths. Got 10 millimeter just in case I was wrong on the valve covers. Huh. Guess I was right on these. So what's weird about it is on a compression release, you normally have to go. What? What, baby? Um, I saw a white cat. Okay. What? I'm filming. <laughs> go play with the kitties. I uh, baby, I'm busy right this minute. Okay, I will in a little bit. So what makes it a little weird is. Most of the time on, uh, let's just say a V8, uh, a couple different ways you can adjust the valves. One is always make sure it's on the base circle on the exhaust and the intake. The easiest way is, let's just say, this one here is the, I can't tell which, uh, I'm gonna say that's gonna be the intake by looking at the track. I would wait till the intake's fully compressed like this one here, and you know that the exhaust is on the base circle. Uh, or you can do both at top dead center. Well, this one requires the spark plug to be down about, I mean, excuse me, the piston be down in a hole about a quarter inch uh, after top dead center because it's got a compression release on it. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to 
Yank the plug out. Hit the right socket there. Yes, you're on a T-Rich. <laughs> when you pull the plug out, it should be a little easier to spin over if you put your hand on top. Turn the crank. Uh, knock it out of gear. Since I'm filming now, I guess I'll throw in a few safeties. I got it in neutral to free up the engine for the transmission, and I also got the parking brake set. All right, let's see if I can turn it by hand. Yep. See, watch. That's your intake valve. That's your exhaust valve. <clears throat> I'm gonna bring her around. You'll see a standard four-stroke work. <clears throat> After the combustion cycle, it opens up the exhaust valve, bleeds it off, and then a tiny bit of valve overlap, and you'll see that intake open up. Sucks in air, fuel, and then it goes into compression stroke. And then, if you watch it, move my finger, you'll see it quiver. You'll see this come up a little bit and then the valve go down just a little bit and that validates right there see it and go back around see that that's where it's bleeding off going through the intake and uh if you do not see that on these the camshaft has a centrifugal weight that turns a pin that's got a flat spot when it's not on a flat spot when it's spinning over i think it's below 300 rpm it uh that little rise is that quiver that you see in the valve and it opens it up cause that compression release but after it starts and gets above 300 rpm it turns to the flat side of that pin due to the counterweight going excuse me the uh, centrifugal weight slinging out and then it gives it 100 percent compression so if you don't see that quiver that piece has probably come loose and got in the bottom and if you don't see that you might want to start tearing this thing down because if that it could do a lot of damage The manual says to check the valve clearances on your intake and exhaust one quarter inch past top dead center. So what I did was, if you notice, I made a mark right here, a little black mark with my, <clears throat> excuse me, my permanent marker, and I made one right here. Now when I stick this screwdriver in, it lets me know when I'm on top dead center because it's all the way up you know that could be here here wherever you put it just remember that's why i made this describe the line on the exhaust bracket here was to let me know where i was at all right so let's bring that thing all the way up there we go and that's quarter inch at that mark that's that so that lets me know if i rotate it past top dead center I know that right there is roughly a quarter inch. And now we can check and adjust the valves. setting 
is six thousandths on the exhaust. It's actually five to seven. That's your exhaust valve. There, it's dead on. If you need to adjust it, I'll go ahead and knock it out and adjust it for you there. Just because I'm that kind of guy. Oh no, it's way out. Oh, what do I do? He adjusted. This is a 764th. I'm sure they make different styles, but I know on this particular style, it's 764th. So I just roll that in. Just put it in there. Six thousandths exhaust valve. And then I just kind of wing that outer one down. Like I said, I run that one out a little bit to give you some leeway until it's touching. And then I just kind of just like, I'll let that dangle a little bit. Because when you start to tighten it down, it's going to throw your adjustment off. So you got to kind of go back and forth. So what I do first is I just run this center one down. Then I crank just a little bit to get it where I want it. It's just a little too tight. Right there. Then I wing that one down. Then I give this a little more snug. Then I tighten that center one. Dead on. There's different ways you can do it, as in how you want to. But just make sure that that lock nut in the center, I mean, excuse me, that, um, that poly lock is all the way down. I mean, it's tight. Don't snap it. I've broke one of them studs before. So that one is, let's make sure again. So I always double check. That, that means it's too tight. It's going to sit there and hang on it. All right. Let's back this off fuzz. Just a scratch. Perfect. Six thousandths. Perfect. I didn't realize y'all were a little out of whack there. There we are. All right, and then the intake is four thousandths. The spec is three to five. We go right there in the middle. See that? Four thousandths. Wow. This one here, since you already know how to adjust it, let me see where this one is. Yeah, and that one's dead on four. That one's dead on four. So we're good to go. But if you adjust that one the same way you adjust the top one, get the slop out and make sure it's kind of dead on. And it's really critical on that intake one because if it's too loose, that compression release isn't going to happen as effectively and it's going to be harder on the starter and harder on the battery so let me just validate that these are good and snug yeah they are and then we'll get to uh getting the gasket made and then get it on that down earlier I'm gonna clean off with a little bit of carb cleaner here you know, gotta make it look like you worked on it people spend money on get work done you know presentation shows a lot 
they spend hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of dollars getting an engine built, something like that. They don't want to see plug wires just strewn all over the place and there's wires all over the place. That's just not good business. They want to be able to pop that hood and see that baby shine. They want to see stuff organized properly. I'm cleaning up carburetor cleaner for a couple different reasons. First of all, A, you want to clean. Duh. Second reason is I'm using Berryman's carburetor cleaner. I like it because uh, it works very well. Got me sold. It's not a plug, not paying me. I just, I love this stuff. All right, we'll set that off to the side. And then, shop tiles. Gotta have them. I'll buy them by the case. I'm also cleaning it because I was also going to put a thin layer of sealant on it. Got me a piece of my gasket maker here. Hmm. They look familiar to y'all and y'all snapper guys? Yeah, I made the gaskets for my snapper. With a chain case and differential case. I'm just going to trace this old one because I lucked out and I live with it. Oops. Got my finger on that one. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. I'm biting this shoulder too. Hey, don't be laughing at the old guy struggling and stuff. That's gonna be y'all one day. Your time's coming. A lot of oopses. Yeah, I ain't gonna see them oopses when I'm done. They'll be, they'll be all right, baby. Are you baby, baby, baby. We'll, we'll take care of that in a little bit. What? We'll take care of it in a little bit, okay? Okay. Okay, I got a 
an exacto knife from some kid I've had for, I don't know, longer than a lot of people have been alive. And I've had this uh, gasket hole maker, uh, that Snap-O Wannabe Blue Point kit. I've had it for a really long time too. So it looks like it's going to be quarter. And I knocked the holes first so it doesn't split when I go to, if I was to cut this first, didn't do that, it could pop in, knock holes, it could possibly split across here. So I knocked the holes first and it's got more meat to play with. Get out Thor. One. Two. I've had a long time, so it might be a little dull. A little extra there. A little extra. There we go. And if you use soft wood, it will you use hardest wood you can. I just got some like 18,000 ply uh, carpentry wood here, uh, like for cabinetry and stuff like that, that my boy come up with. He does cabinetry work, stuff like that. And it's really hard. As you can tell how hard I was hitting it, it barely put an imprint in it and that gives this here more to work with. Uh, if you want a really good cut, use metal and then you'll run into that. So I use wood. Now I don't slice my fingers off. Proud, this isn't gonna lead to the ER. Yes, I'm doing that my glasses. Cause I'm a bad boy. I'm winging it. This gas material, I forgot, I think I spent like 10 bucks on it for that whole little spool you saw there at uh, O'Reilly's. You can get it online, whatever you want. It doesn't matter really. Once you get just some good stuff, I just go with Felpro because I like Felpro. Most of the engine kits I buy, uh, when it best comes to stuff I'm building for myself, family, anything like, well, anything I want a warranty. I try to go with Felpro as the main gaskets. They don't make the best head gaskets, but they make good gaskets. In my personal opinion. No plug for nobody, it's just I like Felpro products. You turn wrenches as long as I have and you want to warranty your work, try to use the best you possibly can. And I've never had to go back in an engine due to a gasket there. Blaze probably not as dull as my sense of humor. I'm sure, my wife would agree. She don't like my old redneck humor. I do.
Look at that. Yeah, they got this for like probably four or five dollars on Amazon. Guess what? They don't deliver in 20 minutes. I do. All right, we'll button this baby back up here. Uh, here in a little bit. Uh, Y'all just see it as a real quick blip, but uh, I got to get back to work. I mean, you know, I've taken a full hour for lunch. Because watching my daughter play outside, blah, blah, play with cats, then try to hurt snake this in. And then uh, here right now, I'm going to be starting back. Only cat cutting the leg on that. Oh. Pick your mess up. Hide that from kids and cats, dogs, and cut themselves. be mean and use that three in weather adhesive but you know I'm gonna take it off one day too. I like my transaxle video. I'm using the tie with a special here. Put just a little bit on it. A thin layer. Gobbit on there, it's just a thin layer. See, folks, folks might be in there screaming, Oh, you're using that on again. Well, clearance is not a problem. A, B, it ain't cork. It's not even sticking really hard. Thin layer.
clean your bolts up a little bit. Dollar up a little bit. Hmm. Guess you could put it upside down. Put it upside down and be like Klingon, wouldn't it? One thing that was kind of gooberish was the fact that the valve cover bolts, three eighths, and the rocker adjusters were 10. It's kind of like work, working on one of these, is kind of like working on a domestic car in the 80s. They didn't know if they were going to run Imperial SAE, if they wanted to run Metric. They didn't know what they wanted. I don't know, we're going to bet it like a Europeans. We're going to go Metric. I don't care. It's a bolt. Metric. SAE. this rebuild on the bottom side. Coming off. When I get in there and I'll make you lunch and yeah, go potty. Yeah, go potty. Sorry, little girl. Slap this plug back. Oops. There we go. Putting the spark plug back in. Oops. I like to put anti sneeze on these. The similar metals, always. A little bit anti sneeze. A little long ways. I have no idea why that. We're going to exhaust on all kind of rack and pinions and stuff like that, which we should have one coming up soon. My uh, CRV. Um, try to break some of these exhaust bolts loose. Like some of these been out there field for 100. 150 to 200,000 miles, you know, it gets pretty rough trying to get those exhaust bolts loose, and I've had to, you know, cut a lot. 
torch a lot over the years. They just put anti-seas on these things. So it'd be all right, you know. So I'll be right back. Uh, that's too too much of an uh, angle right there. So let me get a, another one that'll help me out here. Rubber hose. Last thing you want to do is cross every one of these and have to chase one of these threads. I'm going to tell you, can be a slight pain. Come on now. Shoe doggy. Come on now. There we go. I think all of it was just me. Anywho, huh? Yeah, I had it at the wrong angle. You know, you check the cracks and stuff. You don't want all that fire leaking out. Shorten the ground. Cause the misfires on the load. Alright. Here I'm back. I need to go check on a 50 pound object. Alright, little human doing okay. Alright, so. Like my old boss man said, all we like is finishing up, so. Let's go ahead and throw the hood back on. You reposition the camera. Maybe we can get in there and see some stuff. to it boss goes right here right on the inside it just swivels likewise on the other side holds like that in like clean Nuts 9 16 head on it. That's half. Retarded. this critter back in and, uh, that's all she wrote that's all it is to that and uh, let's make sure she starts and yes the carburetor's built brand new needle and seat every once in a while it still wants to leak a little by so I still put my valve on it there we go let a little in. 
little human coming out here in just a minute. I believe so. All right. Because the battery that's in this, I hate when people move me around too quick, so I'm trying to be easy. That kind of my come out of my snapper, and though it does say a date, the two numbers I hate together because I don't believe in it. Um, what's that? A little over two and a half years old. Uh, it's just never been like as strong as I thought it should be, but uh, is what it is. Because uh, the one ended up dying in my snapper, and that one, even a 12 and a half horse that I'm got tore down right now because the uh, eccentric uh, a rattling in it, had waiting on the money for parts for it. It um, it would it had a hard time spinning that over. So uh, the valves are adjusted correctly, the compression release is working fine. So. Uh, I can throw a battery tester on it and see what we got uh, under a spinning load hot and but uh, I don't feel like driving it right this minute because I got to go take care of a little, uh, little homing in on the inside and uh, take care of some critters so uh, yep as you can tell that thing is it's, that kind of stuff isn't hard uh, take your time check your measurements Double check them, uh, check against reference manuals, whatever you can find online to make sure you do it right. If you run into problems, I'm sure there's people who will help you out. Uh, friends who you know about these, uh, I would say one out of every 10 guys I know would know how to do this. They, they know how to look this kind of stuff up. So uh, pretty much anybody can do this if they really wanted to do it and save themselves some money. Uh, it's not that expensive a job if somebody come in I'd probably charge them just half hour labor plus gasket if I didn't make it uh, I hope you all enjoy this uh, like subscribe um, I don't know where that leads to I'm just I've heard it in so many videos I figured I'd say it because uh, uh, I don't know what else to say so yeah y'all get out there and do something you have a good evening